So you know, they were eternal, they were spoken, they were written down, and then they were copied. Uh, let's show you in Joshua 8. Verse 30 here. <clears throat> then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded the children of Israel. As it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man hath lift up any iron, and they offered thereon burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And this is Joshua now. And he wrote, Joshua, he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. So we can see here that the copying is already started. You know, Moses wrote down the law. Joshua is now copying it. But what's interesting here that Joshua doesn't copy it in secret. He copies it in the presence of everybody. So, you know, like the Bible says, you know, no, no prophecy of the scriptures is any private interpretation. Now, none of this was done in secret. What Jesus did, the Bible says, this thing was not done in a corner. It wasn't done in some far off place where nobody was watching, nobody knew. They're copying it in broad daylight where everybody can see, everybody can check it, everybody can verify it, that these are indeed the words of God. Um, look here in Deuteronomy. Uh, 17 verse 18 we see a command here to the king of Israel it says it, sh it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests and the Levites so we can see that the copy that the king is meant to make is not some secret book that nobody has access to I mean this is the book that the Levites used, it was used in the temple, it was used when it was spoken and preached and read. This is not a secret, this, this, this word of God. But this is what people will say, right? People will say, you know, only, they'll say only the originals can be inspired and can be imperfect because you don't have this word, you just have a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy and that can contain errors. But I want to show you, I want to do this illustration. I want to show you that this, this is not, the fact that you have many, many copies that are done in public, it actually verifies that you have the true original. Um, because a lot of people will say, you know, it's like Chinese whispers, right? It's, it's like Chinese whispers. And, you know, you know Chinese whispers as you copy and you copy and you copy. The message is going to get changed. The message is going to dilute and, and whatever. And, and people aren't going to get the real meanings. So what I wanted to do today is um, I wanted us to play a game of Chinese whispers. And uh, just, just as an illustration, and hopefully this helps you to remember this illustration. But um, the way we'll do it, and let me just... Um, freeze. Alright, let me just freeze that. And what I'll do is I'll get... Um, Maybe I'll get um, Gershon, if you want to come up here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'm going to give, the way we play Chinese whispers, right, is you, you get a phrase, and the, the rules are you have to whisper it to the next person, and you only get to say it once, right? So you whisper it, only say it once, but I'm just going to put a disclaimer, there's no profanity in it, alright? So if you think you hear profanity, you've heard the wrong word. So please don't repeat profanity, Michael, when you get to say it up front here. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll give you the phrase so you can read it, right? And then you'll whisper it to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, to Christine, to Madeline, to Lala. Hopefully you guys want to be involved too, so just whisper it along to those guys. And then Ricky's going to whisper it to Michael, okay? And then Michael's going to say the phrase, and then I'll show you what the phrase is, okay? That's the phrase. Okay, so take as long as you want to memorize it, and I want you to say it to Elizabeth. Now, now hopefully this works. Hope, hopefully it does dilute, but if it doesn't, then it still just proves my point that Chinese whispers doesn't change the word of God. Yeah. No, no, you, you only get to say it once. Oh, okay. Now, Elizabeth, now you have to, you have to say it to Chris, Christina. <laughs> All 
All right, to, to, to Madeline. Doesn't it? Just say what you think you think it was. It, this is the whole point of Chinese whispers. The whole point of Chinese whispers is you just hear what you hear and you just say what you think it is to the next person. I'm, I'm interested to see what Michael says. <laughs> Do you want to? Do, do you guys want to play as well? Ah, okay. Yeah, just go to go to Christine. Doesn't matter. Just either of them. <laughs> I think it normally does. All right, Michael. All right, with a loud with a loud voice, just say what you think the phrase is. Peter. Now <laughs> <laughs> Gershon's already laughing because he knows what the phrase is. So we started off with a phrase. We went through chi Chinese whispers. I don't know if Chinese whispers. See, I can say Chinese whispers because I'm, I'm not being racist, right? Because I'm Chinese. Chinese or the tele people call it the telephone game. Maybe that's the political correct way of calling it. The telephone game. Um, we started off with a phrase. You know, we, we went through. Nobody could verify what it says. And we ended up with the phrase, Peter. Now that's obviously wrong because it's a phrase. But let me show you what the original phrase was. A million monkeys sat down and typed Shakespeare. So a lot of people... So what's my point here? A lot of people say that, oh, you know, the copying of the Bible is like Chinese whispers. But is that, is that how it's really done? Is that a true analogy? It's a false analogy. Because that is not how copies are done. Because think about Chinese whispers. Number one, you can only say it once. And if Elizabeth misheard it, she couldn't verify with Gershon what the phrase was. Then when Elizabeth passed it to Christine, Christine couldn't verify with Elizabeth, nor could she verify it with Gershon. Nor could they verify it with what is on this screen here. And as you go on, it, it starts to change, it starts to lose meaning until it's something totally that it shouldn't be. And people are trying to use this analogy to say, oh, you know, that's how the Bible's copied and copied and copied. No, the analogy of how the Bible is copied is more like this. Everyone see the phrase? Everyone know what the phrase is? And it's, it, we're not going to do this, but let's say I said, everyone write the phrase down. Write the phrase down in your phone. You can cross-check amongst everybody. Make sure you've got it looking exactly like how that looks. Punct you know, let's say punctuation, spelling, capitalization, the grammar. Which is actually wrong because there's a quote mark here and there's not a quote mark in front. So we would get that too, right? We would copy it exactly. And once everybody's got it, everybody's copied it and verified it with each other, with the original. Now we get rid of the original. Now the original is destroyed, it's too, it's worn out, it's gone. Does it even matter anymore? Does it even matter when, you know, it, when everybody's got a copy of it that was verified with the original, could be verified with each other, um, that the apostles who wrote it could verify it? It doesn't get more diluted the more you copy it. The more you copy something, the more verified it becomes. Because the more copies of a writing that is out there, the more sure you are that that is what was in the original. Do you see? That's why, we take them, that's why they take the majority text. Because it's going to be the minority that are trying to change it, trying to twist God's word. And we know where it's wrong because it doesn't line up with every other scripture that's out there. That's why, you know, I, I, don't, I don't mind acknowledging that the Book of Mormon is what Joseph Smith wrote. It probably was, because if they copied it and copied it and copied it, that's probably why it says what it says, because that's what he received from the angel Moroni, which we don't believe was. And it's the same with the Quran. They got it from the angel Gabriel, but it's probably 
an accurate copy because like, like we showed there, it's not like Chinese whispers. As you copy and copy and copy something, it becomes more and more verified and you know the more copies you have, the harder it is actually to corrupt it. Because let's say we all had that written in our phones, exactly how it was, and then somebody tried to come along saying, no, this is what it actually says. Well, you could check with everybody and see where it's wrong, where it's been changed, and know whether to throw it out or not. So I hope, I hope that, I think that worked out well. I hope that helps you <laughs> to show you that a copy can stay perfect. But even, even, even without that, right? Look at these verses in the Bible. Because we actually have examples in the Bible of Scripture that were copies. And they're in the Bible. I didn't know if you know this. Look at this, Ezra. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him. Even unto Artaxerxes the king, thy servants, the men on this side of the river, at, and at such a time. So was this chapter of Ezra, was this the original? It was a copy. But it's in the Bible. And we believe it's inspired writing. There's a couple of others in Ezra. Ezra 5, verse 6. The copy of the letter that Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, and Shetha Bosnai and his companions, the Aphasakites, which were on the side of the river, sent unto Darius the king. Again, a copy of the letter. Ezra 7, 11. Now this is the copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe, even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord, and of his statutes to Israel. So in Ezra, we already see three examples of scripture that's in our, in our Bible that is not the original. It's a copy of it. And check out this one, Proverbs 25. We, we often believe that all the Proverbs were written by Solomon. They weren't all done by Solomon. There were some Proverbs that were done that weren't attributed to Solomon. He's attributed to the book of uh, of Proverbs. But look at that first verse in chapter 25. These are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. So Proverbs 25 is not actually the original writings of Solomon. Hezekiah was a king hundreds of years later. His men copied out the Proverbs of Solomon, and that's where we get chapter 25 of Proverbs. So this idea that a copy cannot remain perfect you know, I can't prove, obviously, that the copies are perfect, but all I'm saying here is, is that if we believe the Word of God, it's not an inconsistent position to believe that a copy can be perfect because there are copies in the Bible that are what we believe to be perfect. So it's totally a consistent position. And in fact, it would be an inconsistent position if you believed the Bible is the Word of God and you didn't believe a copy could be inspired scripture because we have examples in the Bible. 